YouTube viewers and welcome back. As promised, Mystery Moon Part 3. We do have a moon base. There is a military presence on the moon and I'm about to tell you all about it. But first of all, I want to clear up one or two things about why this channel is no longer really on YouTube and has moved to Patreon. So I got really fed up with YouTube. YouTube just don't like me. Science and history channels usually get, you know, a few hundred thousand views. And this channel was getting like a thousand views and YouTube were paying me one dollar a month income. I mean, I just couldn't make it for that. And they started blocking subjects that I was interested in that you really can't do films on World War II or a lot of history. I mean, they just don't like them because you have to be advertiser friendly. Forget that. I want to say what I want to say. So demonetizing all the videos, moving to Patreon has been brilliant. And that's why this film, Mystery Moon Part 3, has been made. I've been researching why haven't we gone back to the moon for 48 years. Gene Cernan was the last man who walked on the moon. It's the obvious high ground, the best ever military base. The Earth is visible all day long from the surface of the moon. You can do stuff there. But apparently for nearly 50 years, we have had no interest in having a base on the moon. It's just not true. It's just a lie. They don't want you to know what's going on. And I want you to really know what's going on. So watch, so watch Moonbase Revealed, this film. But first of all, let me tell you about how it came about. So I basically done two episodes, Mystery Moon 1 and Mystery Moon 2, which led up to just asking the question, why don't we have a moon base? And my Patreon supporters in the discussion, which you are missing, answered the question with some really great inside knowledge. Some documents were sent to me, which basically tell me what's going on on the moon right now. So there's a couple of hundred people who have gone from YouTube to Patreon. They're only paying a dollar for the privilege. And it lets me make these kind of films for Patreons, not for you, because YouTube didn't pay me. So why don't you join the 200 who are already there and join in the discussion with your comments Support me to make more of these films and we can really, together, get to the bottom of mysteries. And for this film, don't forget GlassesUSA.com who are sponsoring my channel. Thank you GlassesUSA.com, you're great. And by the way, the glasses are great too. So there's a 65% discount as an initial customer for glassesusa.com in the description. So please go and support them because they are supporting me. And if you want to be part of this for $1, come over to Patreon and join a couple of hundred of really interesting, like-minded people who love science and have some very good inside knowledge. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the answer to, are we on the moon right now? Hey, wonderful patrons, and thank you so much for watching Mystery Moon part one and part two, but now we have part three. Thanks to you. Lots of people made very, very smart comments about, do we have a base on the moon and what would it do?
one of the smartest points raised was it would be rubbish as an intercontinental ballistic missile site because it would take like three days at very fast speeds, maybe a bit less, to go from the moon to hit your target. Well, that's no damn good. But imagine things at the speed of light. Oh, I'm not imagining laser weapons, I'm just saying telecommunications. A moon base that can transmit to the Earth in just a few seconds would be very useful. I know, and I really do know, that a lot of money is spent on finding enemy ballistic submarines. I mean, they are the terror weapon of the Cold War and mutually assured destruction because they are so clandestine. And if you could know where your enemy submarines with missiles on board are, you've got an enormous advantage. And you could see if they were making any moves to fire them or whatever. So, I mean, so much money has been spent in searching for submarines over the years. The whole SOSIS uh, seabed sonar system was wired across the whole of the Atlantic, possibly the Pacific too, and monitored. And every single sound under the sea is analyzed. And as we've talked before, magnetic anomalies can now be found from aircraft, maybe from space. An incredible detail was found in a gravity model, so you could see gravity disruptions, possibly by a large submarine. So it makes sense to me that military really do want a base on the moon for some military non-scientific activities. Not missiles, but submarine tracking, communication, and then for space, it's a great launch pad for missions to Mars or elsewhere. But that's all in the past. If we zoom forward to today, this guy, one of the richest people in the world, has said, that he wants to take all heavy, dirty industry off Earth and into space, the moon being a perfect place for your next Amazon purchase. So I looked really carefully, and I genuinely believe that we do have a base on the moon. Okay. It's not a manned base. And it's made up of various scientific instruments that effectively make the whole moon a base. And that's why I think we need two-way communication, internet, 5G to control the guys on the moon and sending data back to the Earth. But let's look a bit more closely on what we probably have. First of all, the concept of a manned moon base was taken really seriously. In the mid-50s, Project Horizon wanted to bury parts of rockets in trenches on the surface of the moon for a permanent manned base. And they did it, but not on the moon. They did it here in the Arctic. On the top of the world, Below the surface of a giant ice cap, a city is buried. This is the story of Camp Century. Today on the island of Greenland, the United States Army has established an unprecedented nuclear-powered Arctic research center. This very secret base was under the ice and was powered by a nuclear reactor. It was part of the distant early warning system, or dew line, and it was top secret. Now here it is. With all life control rods withdrawn 6.24 inches, PM2A went critical at 0652 hours. Many of its technologies in heating, water production, and just general life, the psychological effect of being in a tube buried under the ice or on the moon, there's not much difference. I think this project was a test bed for Project Horizon to the Moon.
lost. I don't know where I am. But all the time the manned mission was planned and cancelled and other plans made, unmanned scientific instruments were sent to the moon. Today, you can bounce a laser from your backyard off three reflective plates that were left with Apollo 11, 12, and 14 on the moon. And they are used by scientific establishments to discover the distance accurately to a few millimeters from Earth to the moon. That's a science project. The strange geology of the moon has been a constant source of research. The GRAIL project had two orbiting satellites, GRAIL-1 and GRAIL-2, the Holy Grail, and it looked at the strange geography of the moon. And let's not forget, we know how to soft land on other planets. Look at all the rovers on Mars and look at the work they're doing. And as we know, the moon is only three days away and we know how to soft land on its surface. So that's all fluff, because what I'm going to say now just took a bit more digging and I think is the answer to the mystery. So during the Clinton administration, who remembers this guy? The wonderfully named Newt Gingrich. And guess what Newt Gingrich proposed? Yep, a manned military moon base. Newt Gingrich says he will establish a permanent base on the moon if he's elected president. His opponents say the idea is more loony than lunar. Here's our Washington correspondent, Matt Fry. One, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. But only with Newt Gingrich as president, or so he claims. By the end of my second term, we will have the first permanent base on the moon, and it will be American. He wasn't in power, he was in opposition, but very soon he got the ear of George W. Bush. Today I announce a new plan to explore space, extend a human presence across our solar system. And he was definitely a fan of military prowess, backed the Newt Gingrich plan and I don't think it was really built, but I think if we do have a base on the moon, it dates back to the Bush, the George W. Bush administration and the Newt Gingrich proposal. Of course, it's not on the internet, and I've dug around to see, did it happen? Was it canceled? Where was the funding? You know, what happened to the Gingrich moon base? And it's just a brick wall. I mean, you can't really tell what happened. Either it just went away or it was built and we know nothing about it. The truth is out there. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We are not entering outer space simply to indulge our national pride. We have a duty to discover all we can about why we are here. After braving the vast unknown and discovering the new world, they stayed, they explored, they built, they guided. And through that pioneering spirit, they imagined all of the possibilities that few dared to dream.